<laughs> hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another great edition of the Frankie Slauson Show. And uh, today we kind of start our road to WrestleMania series. And uh, well, with me is my first get, uh, guest of uh, a guy who's been at a few WrestleManias. Uh, he's he's known for as one half of the natural disasters as a uh, typhoon uh, and tugboat. As well as his uh, uh, debut in WCW as the Shockmaster, I give you Mr. Fred Ottman. How's it going, man? All right. How's it going, man? I'm doing okay. It's uh, it's an honor to have this uh, chance to to talk to you. Sweet man, I'm glad to be here. <laughs> I'm glad to have you on, and uh, you know, you 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 definitely have made your status known as a as a legendary figure in the world of professional wrestling. Uh, was wrestling something that you always wanted to do as a career? Uh, not what I went to school for, but you know what? It's something I really enjoyed and something that I'm glad, glad I did. And, and if I had to do it all over again, I would do it. And you got to you got to work with uh, the legendary John Earthquake Tenta and the late, great uh, John Tenta. How was he to work with uh, back when you guys were a tag team? He was great to tag with, as well as to work against. He was he was a definitely a legend. He was definitely a, a an awesome human being, a great athlete, you know, and uh, a good friend. You know, I really enjoyed that. He was a uh, I really miss him a lot. To be honest with you. And, and you guys were were pretty much like brothers anyway, more or less. Yeah, we were. I mean, uh, who else would ride the? Uh, Dumbo Kitty Ride at uh, Disney World. You know. <laughs> wow! And and like like when you guys like got started as a tag team, how did you how did you meet and how did that whole how did the whole natural disaster thing uh, happen? Well, I was uh, he just finished his uh, going around with Hulk and that stuff, and I was still tugboat and. Uh, I was really enjoying that because I like the kids and stuff like that. So it was, uh, you know, people ask you which characters you like the best all the time, but you know, it's hard to judge. I enjoyed everything that I'd done, you know. Yeah. And I, you know, found good in everything. So, but with, as far as him, you know, they approached uh, the powers that be, approached me, and about putting this tag team together, you know, with Jimmy Hart as our manager and everything like that, you know, and uh, I, you know, I mean. Uh, I was going really, really well, and I wish uh, you know, a lot of people loved the tugboat, you know, and I, to this day, I guess, you know, a lot of people, you know, that, you know, really relate to that, you know, but, and, uh, but, uh, they said about putting me together with him, I'm like, two guys, and both of us could move and do the things, and just thinking about all this stuff that we could do, and the whole deal, I was like, man, it sounded like an awesome pairing, you know, and be you know, two huge guys that, you know, can just be like a dominating force in, you know, WWF. I was really excited about it, to be honest with you. Yeah, and, you know, and, and it kind of, I'm sure it, it kind of influenced, like, a lot of the, the big men that are, like, who have wrestled other than you and an Earthquake, but uh, you got, you know, a lot of inspiration goes because nowadays you don't really see it as, as many big men wrestling as you used to back in the day. No, uh, not really. You know, it's almost like uh, sometimes, you know, and I really enjoy watching a lot of the guys that are in there today, you know what I'm saying? But so many guys are, it's like cookie cutter almost to an extent, you know. The, you know, it used to be back in the day as goofy as some of the gimmicks were and all the stuff like that, but, you know, everybody, it was all kinds of uh, gimmicks and all kinds of people and size people. You know, from the midgets, women, all that, you know, to appeal to every, every, you know, uh, taste, every person's taste, kind of, so to speak. Sure. You know, and there were some big guys. I mean, a lot of big guys. You know, like, I, I tell a lot of people about a story, you know, when I broke in, I broke in in San Antonio, Texas, and uh, I got a chance to uh, uh, be around Bruce Brody a lot, who was a legend, you know, and he was one of the best big men in the business. I mean, he was a locomotive in the ring. In shape, you know, Frank, Frank Goodish, you know, ex NFL pro ball player, and uh, you know, and he was a terror in Japan. I mean, he wasn't un, uh, like him to uh, kick down. He didn't tell me he kicked the door down and knocked out about five Japanese 
uh, fan coming out the door, you know, right out of the gate, like a big bull at a rodeo. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, and here's a, he was a big guy, man, he could go. I mean, he'd be, not, all, all he was missing was the steam of a locomotive. That's all coming out of his breath. Yeah. You know? you know, but just phenomenal. I mean, there was a lot of big guys back in the day. A lot yeah. of 300 plus fathers. Yeah, and, and and now, you know, like, there's a superstar that I watch on WWE uh, called The Great Khali. Now, he's not a, he's not a 400-pound, like, big guy like, like you are, you are, but he's, like, a tall guy. But I don't think they, right. I don't think they push him as much as they did when he first debuted. When he first debuted, he was like a, he was like a monster. They made him a monster, and oh, now, yeah. now they kind of make him, I hate to say the word, but they kind of make him a pussy, more or less. <laughs> yeah. And it's really a shame. I'm, I'm glad to see that they're doing as much with the big show as, as they are. Yeah. Because the big show is a phenomenal athlete. You know what I'm saying? He's not only big, but he's an athlete. Do you, you know? And he's a, he's a good guy. I, I, I uh, And I enjoy his work. You know, I mean, uh, we talk online every once in a while. You okay. know, uh, through my Facebook, you know. And, I mean, I enjoy watching him, you know. And, you know, doing this. And I think, you know, he should be him, you know. If you're able to do the things that you can do, you know, you got it flying, you know? Sure. Yeah, and, and uh, yeah, he's one of those guys that uh, I'm, I'm really surprised that he's been in this as long as he has. I mean, a lot of people don't realize that. You know, a lot of people who who claim that they're wrestling fans, but don't really, they only think they know him from the WWF. They don't realize that uh, he started out in WCW as the Giant, pretty much. Right. Right. But it's just a matter too. He was very green back then, you know. But it's a matter of him coming into his own, you know. I mean, look at the guys like you know. I mean. Uh, shoot, uh, that are out there. I mean, you know, he's just. And the thing, what's very deceiving is he, he, because he's so athletic, and now he's doing more, showing more of the stuff he can do. And here's a guy that's that big that can have a match with the Ray Mysterio, but, you know, Ray Mysterio being a general, and, you know. Yeah. And you go, okay, this guy has, you know, in the real life, this guy would have no chance, but believable stuff, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, and I, and I suppose even with with like a big show. I mean, if if uh, if wrestling was more like I hate when people you know when a lot of people say that wrestling's fake, especially the ones that don't know about the industry. Like I've never been a re- I've never been a wrestler, but I I've always been a fan, and I've been a fan since I was a little kid, since like the early nineties. And I and I know the the ups and downs of the of the business. And I hate people that say that wrestling's fake when when you look at a guy like the Big Show, who could easily easily in a in a fight. Could easily destroy just about anybody he got, you know, he fought with, but that could have oh, a match like that. He, if he punched you in the face, he'd crush your face out. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I think there was a situation when he first came up there where a the guy uh, slapped him the, uh, back between his shoulder blades. And, uh, you know, one of those deals like, you know, one of those ass type ass clowns. You know, uh, yeah. you know, at a hotel situation where uh, he whacked him, and uh, you know what I'm saying, he wound up getting in a little trouble. So I don't know, uh, this is something I heard, so I'm, whether it be true or not, you know, but very feasible. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he's a big, strong man, you know, and there's no doubt in my mind. I mean, you know, it's the immovable force against the immovable object. Yeah. So what what do you think about like what I just got done mentioning about when people talk about saying that uh, basically wrestling's fake? What do you think about that, or um, what goes to your mind when you when when you hear people say that? Want, well, those are their opinions. You know, what I'm saying I go like you know I, I address a lot of that a lot of times. You know, and I'm like you know what it's you know <laughs> all I can tell you is when I was I was an indi- when I was a re- professional wrestler full time I couldn't get insurance and I go did you watch 2020 they say it's entertaining. It's entertainment, but it's very physical entertainment. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Uh, you know, uh, and I mean, you know, I give the analysis, it's like playing football with no pads. Yeah. That's pretty basic, like, kind of what it comes down to. You know what I'm saying? For every hold, there's a, uh, a reverse hold in that, and we are entertainers out there. But I, the people that say what they say have never been in the ring. So until they actually feel themselves being slammed on a concrete floor or, you know, being run into a set of uh, steps because 
I, you know, I and like a lot of other guys in the business have given my body to wrestling. You know, uh, I, I've taught CPR and first aid classes before, okay? Sure. And uh, 90% of the injuries I have had to my, you know, 17 plus years of wrestling career, okay? And, uh, you know, I mean, <laughs> nose been broken like four times. I have two or three fingers on each hand. Both thumbs broken. Uh, uh, perforated eardrum. Uh, four teeth kicked out different times in Japan when I worked over there. Uh, uh, 160 odd stitches in my head over the years. Uh, I have bone chips, both elbows that are floating around so I can't extend or fully or uh, pull up my arm. Uh, inside head of, the, uh, of my left arm, the tricep has been uh, uh, tore from the bone, the elbow, and wasn't reattached. I uh, have only there's three tendons in each of your shoulders. Sure. I've only got one left in my left shoulder. Oh, wow. The other two are shredded. Um, and partially torn the top tendon right leg. Uh, I have a hole in the fascia of my lower calf on my left. I've, uh, I just did surgeries on, uh, on uh, both legs, uh, vascular surgery, where they actually cut pieces of the vein out. You know, and I'm still healing from that, and uh, you know, from just, just uh, collisions with immovable objects over the years. <laughs> uh, Jeez, I did that while I accidentally tore my toe tendon. That was outside the thing. So Jeez. while I've been out with that for about nine months, I took and uh, uh, added this other surgery, and I'm fixing to go back and try to do a few additional ones, making sure my plumbing is real good. But these were just, you know, I guess from the years of the battering, you know, in the, in the world of things, it's, it's the grand scheme. But other than that, I mean, like I said, you know, it's uh, it's entertainment, you know, but it's very physical entertainment. You know, coming guys coming off the top of 12-foot cages through tables, <laughs> yeah. uh, slammed on concrete, uh, uh, I mean, just a multitude of things. I mean, there's been guys who've had their necks broken, you know. So, uh, Dean Malenko. He's got a scar that runs down the back of his neck. Uh, wow. You know, I mean, so, you know, the stuff is out there. You know, it's very, very physical, you know. But it is entertainment. So so do you think because of the fact that you're a bigger guy that it that it probably hurt you a lot more because of your size? Or do you think it wouldn't have made I a think difference? Everybody, I think everybody, you know, it's just depending on the day and the, and the whole, you know, whole deal. That's why when I was on the road, I spent every minute I can, uh, I was spending in the gym, you know, training. And I was a power lifter before I was a pro wrestler. And I, I uh, continued, you know, every time I got an opportunity, I, I was training, you know, because I figured if I had some uh, mass in between me, <laughs> me and whatever I was hitting or whatever hitting me, because, you know, I've been hit with chairs, I've been hit with. You know, I've been in barbed wire matches, thumbtack matches, uh, uh, you know, you name it, I've been there. That, uh, you know, it, it would give me an edge, you know what I'm saying? I would say. And keep me, my, keep my um, me mentally where I need to be, you know? Wow. Yeah, you know, I I remember there was one match that I watched when you were in WCW, the uh, the Fall Brawl, the War Games match that you were in, and you were like one of the last oh. guys to to enter, and you really you really kicked a lot of ass in that match. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Yeah, that's like my that's like my dynamic uh, entrance into the uh, WCW. The <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I wasn't going to bring it up because sometimes when people when people bring up stuff like that, you know, no, I wasn't sure how they, you would be I able to handle it. <laughs> well, because they, they have, you know, that they have an award named after them, you know. What I mean? <laughs> you know, and uh, I enjoy, you know, I am me, you know. I, I mean, I, like I tell people all the time, I still watch cartoons. Yeah. You know, I'm still, I'm going to be a kid till the day I die. You know, what I'm saying, hopefully it's not too soon. Yeah, yeah. You know I'm saying, I, I, you know, I have a lot of immaturity about me. You can ask my ex-wife about that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, my three, and my three sons, especially I mean my my daughter, and my two sons, and sure. now I have. Cause I'm remarried. I have a whole lot of children and plus a grandchild. Oh, so yeah. you know, that's, 
you know, it's all cool, you know, but you know what? I'd rather have go through life fun and enjoy myself and be an old fart, you know, just yeah. sitting around and, sure. and being miserable, you know, about mistakes I've made or things that happen, you know. I was, that was at a Shockmaster deal happened on live TV. There's no taking, but no, no take back on that deal. You know what I'm saying? It was one of the deals that they told me to bust the wall out because it was hard. I took a double fist to the top and whoops, they never broke at the bottom. I should have kicked the bottom of the wall out first. But you know, I am, I am mentally challenged, you know, so uh, there's not much you can do about that. Yeah. No, it, so, yeah, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. You know what? I, you know, I've had a lot of fun with it over the years. I enjoy it. If you can't laugh at yourself, too, you know, who can you laugh at? A lot of people have made their comments over the years about it, like that in the business and everything. Yeah. But it is what it is. And you know what? There's a lot of famous people out there that are uh, in entertainment that have made a lot of mistakes on their own over the years. Sure. You can't, you know, it's not a perfect world. It's just one of those things. You just kind of got to go with the flow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and I do. And that's the best way to be, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, I enjoy people. I enjoy, I enjoy what I do. I mean, I love the business. Uh, I, I don't go much around uh, when they're in town and stuff like that. My son wants to be a referee. My oldest son. Sure. And then uh, with uh, uh, the uh, developmental here in Tampa for a couple of years, he's not signed with him or anything like that. But he's been working for this, around it since he's in high school and that stuff and. And uh, he went through, uh, when he turned 18, he got to go through camp, wrestling camp, and he's a tall, skinny glass of water, okay? <laughs> but he's got, he's got heart. He loves the business, you know, unfortunately. Huh, well, you know, but, you know, not that I'm sure, you know, but, you know, I'm like, you know. Well, he got to you for there, you know? he, he got to you for inspiration, that's for sure. And that's, I think it's pretty cool to have a father in wrestling. You know, if I could say anything, he is very, very good. I also at the same point told him, I said, go to school and learn the, uh, you know, the meat and potatoes of the business, which is, you know, television and uh, movie, you know, go learn those skills. That way you're very well-rounded and have, you know what I'm saying? You got to have skill. Yeah. You got to have stuff to fall back on and stuff like that. So that should, you know, go through. And you never know where this business is going to go, you know, or what's going to happen with it. Yeah. changing thing all the time, you know, and there's a, a lot of people out there, you know, taking their bite, you know, uh, of entertainment. You yeah. Know, so it's better to have skills that deal with entertainment. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, and, and yeah. one thing that I that I was reading up on on your Wikipedia page, I don't know, it's because Wikipedia, you know, I don't know if that's uh, real accurate information or, or what, but I, it said that you are the uncle to uh, one of the uncles to uh, Cody Rhodes. Yeah, well, Dusty is my ex pro in law. Okay. That, and Sag the Nasty Boy is my other ex brother in law. Okay. And uh, uh, Cody is my nephew, and Goldust, that's my other nephew. Wow. <laughs> See, I didn't, uh, I didn't know that. You know, I, I, I just found that out today. <laughs> oh, yeah. They, they're great. Although I have to say about Wikipedia, it's not very accurate. It says I'm 6'3 in there. Oh, you know, yeah, yeah. It's, Virginia. It's, it's been listening to too much publicity. <laughs> I don't know I who's in charge of that. Yeah. Anybody wants to know. yeah, I I don't know who's in charge of the Wikipedia thing, but I it, it kind of helped me for some information anyway because I want to learn as much about you other than just the stuff that I do know about you. Yeah. But I, you know, I, I always try to do that. You know, with what with, with uh, guests my that come kids, on. You know, my kids, my kids are told, you know, Dad, we tried to change it, man, but we couldn't change it. Yeah, I go well. You know, I don't know what to say, but you know what? Oh, it, it, all of this is what it is. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, there's a lot more stuff that's out there that's embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, I would say so. Yeah. Hey, you know, and, and and at least you're not one of the wrestlers that you know would would have like a drug sta- or drug scandal or like a thing with steroids or you know like you hear about all the time you know when oh this person did steroids and this person's doing drugs so he can't wrestle anymore or blah blah blah. But it seems like well, with you, it, yeah, you yeah, have the a deal. Is, the deal is I'm going to invent asteroids <laughs> and get you high and big at the same time. <laughs> wow. Yeah, and, uh, well, since we're talking, you know, since I was saying at the beginning that this is kind of like my my own version of my special Road to WrestleMania series, since I have talked to other uh, wrestlers before, uh, you're not the only one. You're you're one of the probably, 
you're probably maybe the ninth or tenth wrestler I've talked to uh, in the business. Uh-huh. But uh, what are some of your memories from WrestleMania? Oh man, I mean, uh... <laughs> oh god, I know it's probably uh, a tough one. <laughs> one of the most embarrassing, I guess, is uh, we were in Indianapolis. I guess, uh, and I've talked about it before in the past and everything like that. Uh, getting a cue to go home when uh, we were going out to the ring. Okay. You know, and, uh, winding up doing the whole match and coming back to uh, the people very, being very upset in the back at the same time, you know. And, uh, you know, and I'm like, you know, being the first one coming back to the curtain ain't good either, you know. So it wound up being, getting all that first and saying, hey, it was up to the general, you know, and just kind of like passing it down the line, you know, to who made the judgment call. I'm sure they wasn't the general in the match. It wasn't me. I was j- jabroni. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, but, I mean, WrestleMania is always very exciting and stuff like that. I remember uh, at that particular one also that uh, uh, I believe it was uh, Reva McIntyre was supposed to come in and she sang the uh, national anthem. They had the whole room fixed up for her and, uh, uh, you know, it's how they want, you know, what foods they want, all that stuff. They have to set up, you know, uh, the room for them. Yeah. But to me, she never came in the building. She got the cue from her limousine, came into the building. And uh, when the boys heard about that before, uh, there was several people. I don't know who it was. I'm not going to mention it. I think it happened. Huh. It's all I can hear. <laughs> yeah, she went. <laughs> To the, to the stage saying and what's going on going left you know yeah. so I was a little it, it kind of like you know, I was a little upset about that you know that somebody would think a little more much of us you know but you know she's a great superstar and all right so everybody whatever you know okay. they want to hop and hop with us it's okay <laughs> it's on my deal yeah yeah, yeah and, but, and yeah go, go ahead continue no 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 okay but, I mean uh, I mean just WrestleMania was awesome. All these different superstars and stuff like that. Uh, one WrestleMania I wasn't at was when uh, they were in Vegas. And we got sent to Tahoe. I got sent to another one. I think it was, in a, you know, where they send you special guest stars in different places. So, you know, if you're not working, you're doing something to promote and you're doing something backstage or doing meet and greets and stuff like that. I mean, it's a very active time. Uh, the, the one when we did the uh, Gimmick Battle Royal in Houston. Yeah. Uh, then we did the, uh, they had the uh, fan next door to the Astrodome. They had it set up there with the, uh, the fan fest deal, you know, and we had a lot of fun there, you know, meeting, doing the meet and greets with all the guys. And then, you know, they had different guys work in there for the fans. And that's when they had the, uh, uh, the football company working. So they had some little football players there that would, that would invent his, uh, football thing and then uh, you know I mean it, it, it's it's cool I mean there's always something different and new you meet fans from all over the world that fly in for WrestleMania you know and a lot of celebs and stuff like that that, that love the business also you know so it's kind of cool you know I mean you know it, it, you know and I'm a big mark so if I'm there at Mania I'm at the curtain at the girl position and uh, <laughs> watch the matches oh you know, cool yeah. Just like, you know, I, when I was on the road, I'd love, I, you know, I'd do my match, but, you know, up until that point or before, depending where I was at on the card, you know, I was watching everybody else. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah, I you know, with the I young guys, The young guys were coming up, man. I was always telling that's where you need to be. If your first match, you know, get your stuff done and, and what? You know what I'm saying? You can always get out of the building. But a chance to watch everybody, it's like going to school every night. You know, especially when you're new or you're you're young or green and you know in the business and everything like that. It's every night's education. Yeah, and, you, you know? and you're and you're learning. You're learning other people's skills too while you're watching. And the way I work, I need all the help I could do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm surprised that I'm a gimmick, man. I'm a gimmick, all right. Yeah. Well, I'm surprised that they never let you have a, a shot at the at the big championship. At the, I mean, I know you're a former tag team champion, but I, 
you, you, I'm surprised they never let you become the, the World Wrestling Federation champion at the time. Because well, I'm sure you could have. I don't think it would do much for the credibility of that, though, man, for me. <laughs> well, no, I, I, th- I think it would have been, it would have suited you well, though, because, you know, uh, because they let Yokozuna in 1993 when he won the Royal Rumble uh, become champion at, after he be- beat Bret Hart at WrestleMania 9. He was like one of the, yeah. one of the first big men to, to, to win the championship. I'm going to tell you about Yoko, he was awesome, big man. <laughs> he was an awesome big man, you know. He's another guy, you know, that's missed. I mean, I have a, a lot of uh, uh, different posters from you know WrestleManias and uh, all that stuff uh, in my house, you know, and a lot of memorabilia and stuff that I've you know accumulated over the years and everything. I want to be kind of a, a little bit of a mark myself, you know what I'm saying? And I look at a lot of them and I see a lot of guys that I made road trips with. I mean. Uh, and, you know, that I miss, you know, I mean, uh, and I look at them and I go like, wow, it's just amazing you know, how many, how many guys are gone, you know, yeah. it's a hard business, people don't realize what a hard business it is, like, you know, we were on the road 250 to 300 days a year, and uh, it's a hard life, it's no different than any other entertainer, you know, and people don't realize, unless you've walked in someone's shoes, you know what I'm saying, uh, yeah. just trying to stay healthy, and try to, you know, to keep your edge, and, you know, to keep your body together, you know, especially, you know, you're an independent contractor, you know, if you're hurt, you know, there's no, it's not like a worker's comp or, a, you know, a, it's, if you can get insurance, you're really lucky, you know, I mean, it's almost impossible. You know, like I said, I, you know, I told a guy one time, I'm like, he wanted to buy uh, health insurance, he's like, uh, I said, man, did you watch 2020? Man, it, it's entertainment. That's what they said, right? Oh, you're a wrestler. We can't. We can't do it. We can't do it. You know, <laughs> uh, more than more than one off. You know, kind of gives you kind of. You know, you got to have it, and then you can't have me. I get. You know, I, I had uh, caught pneumonia one time. I was up in uh, in Canada for before I came in for TV, and uh, wound up catching pneumonia while I was up there. I came home, and um, my O2, my uh, PO2, my oxygen level was I think, about 20 or something like that. So the guy, the guy told me I was real tired, real lethargic, and I'm having a barbecue for my parents in my house. And he's and, uh, he's like, man, mom, I'm tired, you know? And so I went to, she goes, well, go up the road. And I went up the road to the hospital and I checked me out. And my oxygen levels, they're, they're like, I don't know how you're walking around, man. People have your oxygen level in your blood are, uh, are you know, would be unconscious. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no well, kidding. Thank you. That makes you feel good. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, but, you, know. you must have been able to survive because I mean, for you know, I mean, you're one of the, the one of the big men that are still, you know, and it's it's great to know that you're still around because uh, while you see yeah. most of the ones who, like I think, wasn't Yoko's deal that, that he was just too big that he wasn't losing any weight or something, and it just just had a heart know, attack he or something. Down, so like, he went up and down. I don't know. You know, died of a massive heart attack. It's a shame. I, I, I miss him. Yeah. I miss him a lot. He was a good guy. All, all, all the guys, you know what I mean? Uh, it was maybe five, six months ago I seen, uh, you know, a couple of cousins and stuff like that while I was up in New Jersey, you know, and I was, you know, uh, you know, and, and it's awesome. That's what's really cool. I got several autograph things from a matter of fact who were in Sea Caucus. I got invited up there coming up, uh, by WrestleMania weekend, you know, that week of WrestleMania. Yeah. And uh, that's one of the deals I'm going to, and so it's really exciting. I'm hoping that I can stay over a few days and uh, be up there by, you know, and, and uh, be up there during Mania. That would be really, really nice. So I don't know what's, what's going on. It's, uh, I haven't checked any more into it right now to see what's happening. But uh, I would like to go up there and maybe go, go up and see some of the guys and stuff and everything while I'm in town. You know, last you know, year, last year, cool. last year was cool that they inducted a Yokozuna in the Hall of Fame. Do you think that maybe soon that you and maybe even you and John Tenta together as some natural disasters uh, be uh, inducted to the Hall of Fame at all? Uh, it'd be a really great honor. But there's a lot of guys out there that I feel a lot more at this point in time that haven't gone in yet that I feel are more, uh, you know, uh, uh, deserving. You know what I'm saying? I, it would be a real honor if, I, if, if it ever happens to me, you know, and my partner, I, I, it's real deserved because, 
he was so good and, and uh, you know, I mean, he's so versatile and, and he's just a great all-around athlete. I mean, you know, he was an amateur uh, wrestling champion in Canada. He wrestled at LSU. He uh, was in Osumo in Japan for a short time. He needed to be in there. And that's where he broke into pro wrestling there with, with Shoei Baba. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, and so, I mean, he was a, a, a great athlete, man. People, I think a lot of times, really don't, he's underestimated and don't realize what a talent he was. You know, and he, he had a good heart, man. He was a good person. You know, and I, I think I'm okay, too, once in a while. <laughs> you know, I'm sleeping, maybe, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So, so you're not. So it's not really a big deal to you to uh, be in the Hall of Fame like it is to a lot of other superstars. It would be. It, I, oh, I'm not saying it's not a big deal. I mean, it would be awesome. You know what I'm saying? But I think there's there's a whole lot of guys out there. You know, I, I I'm not. You know, I mean, there's a lot of great generals. I call those two guys like that. They're they're generals, all right. You know, and there's a lot of guys out there, you know, and I would never want to, you know, I've not, never been that, that ego kind of deal, you know, and I feel that there's a lot of guys out there maybe a little more deserve, uh, you know, and I appreciate anybody that would think that much of me that would offer me that opportunity. Trust me, you know, yeah. it would be, it would be a tremendous thing and, you know, you know, especially you for my family to see, you know. Yeah. Well, yeah, especially. But never say I never, I never rolled off my list. I would say no, no, no. I, I don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah, you'd be a fool you know? to do that. <laughs> yeah. I think, you know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah. There's a lot of guys that out there that that uh, have been overlooked in, in my past that, that really deserve to be there. So, so who in your mind do you who who do you think to or who would you like to see get in there since you're mentioning about it? Oh, man, there's just so many guys. I, man, I, I couldn't, wouldn't, and, you know, there, I mean, there's <laughs> just too many. You yeah. Know, I, mean, I, 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 I could never be the judge in that deal, you know what I'm saying? I think they're everybody, you know, they only take so many, yep. you know? It's like the Hall of Fame everywhere else, basketball, football, you know. Uh, all over, you know what I'm saying? They can only take so many at a time, you know. And it's, you know, I, I just think that everybody deserves to be in there at some point in time. You know, and they make sure, you know, there should be a big list and make sure you don't bring anybody, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and they, a couple of weeks ago, they announced uh, Bruno San Martino was finally going to be inducted after all these years. Wow. Uh, whatever, whatever, whatever I don't go. know, yeah, I don't know whatever conversation they had. I never read up on that, but uh, something that was uh, preventing uh, him from being a part of the WWE or something, but they finally resolved the difference, and this year he'll be one yeah, of the inductees. Kind of I don't know what it was either, you know. Yeah. You know, but, I mean, when you think wrestling, Hello, that's, you know, <laughs> like Rare Flair, you know, or, you know, Gorgeous George, or, uh, you know, uh, I, I mean, I, I don't know, <laughs> you know, like, you know, I, Bruce Brody, I mean, uh, uh, shoot. Uh, Hell, even Larry Zabisco could be in there. I'd put him in there. Larry Zabisco, I mean, he, he was tremendous. I mean, there was got so many guys, from, I mean, so many different places in this country that were just, that have just, you know, anybody that's been in that ring for that much time in front of the people, you know, whether you're hated or you're loved, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, that, that blood, sweat, and tears of the business, you know what I'm saying, that you gave your life to, you know, you deserve some kind, you know. And there's a lot of people out there that are just miserable persons, you know what I'm saying? In yeah. real life and in the race. <laughs> but then, you know, like everybody deserves, you know what I'm saying? Everybody, you know, you know, deserves their moment of glory and, you know, and accomplishment, you know? They entertain people. You know, bad or good or indifferent, you know, they, they, uh, they performed and, 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 uh, you know, gave their all for this business, you know? And that's a very important thing, man. Yeah, it is. It is a very important thing. I, you know, and uh, a while ago, like about a month ago, I had the honor to uh, talk to the Macho Man Randy Savage's uh, younger brother, Lanny Poffo, and uh, 
it, it, he was kind of disappointed the fact that the the fact that they never wanted to induct uh, Randy into the Hall of Fame, let alone Randy's father into the Hall of Fame while they were both alive. But that now it's like uh, now he doesn't know, or he he's not sure if he even wants to see Randy ever get inducted. Now, you know what? That's a travesty because Randy was a, a true general, and and his father, all of them, Randy did a tremendous a tremendous worker and, and great athlete. You know what I'm saying? And you know, uh, that's really a shame that. That, that that's happening. It's like what I'm saying, people being uh, bypassed or you know overturned, and you know, and uh, uh, both. You know, I mean, it, it's really a shame that they, they would uh, do something like that. Randy was, you know, just phenomenal. I mean, when you think, I mean, when uh, uh, Hulk Hogan and uh, Randy Savage were the pinnacles there. Yeah. You know, at one time, Randy Savage. Hulk and the Ultimate Warrior, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and uh, it's one of those deals, you know. Randy, I mean, he's just phenomenal. I mean, he was a general. I mean, he could bring the crowd up and raise the roof and then bring him back down again, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, he was truly an artist and, and, and an athlete, you know? He had great persona. He, he wheeled a hell of an interview, and, you know what I'm saying? I mean, the costumes, you know, and, and, and everything. I mean, he was an incredible person, man. He basically loved the business. whole family there. Yeah, he, huh? lo- the, he loved the business, as they all did. Yeah. Loved the business. They lived the business, you know? I, I mean, <laughs> that's the Travis, he, you know? It's like one of the deals, you know, Sam, when I was talking before, there's so many people out there like them that gave their life and were raised up, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. He was, uh, was father-son, you know what I'm saying? There's so many of those that you're seeing coming down the line now, you know, second generation, third generation, whatever, you know, of the business, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and, that, and uh, yeah. To find somebody that took to Randy's shoes, you're not going to find that, you know. Many people that, what do you call it, often imitated but never duplicated. Sure. There's you one there's one wrestler that I always thought really deserved to be in the Hall of Fame as well as as many as, as there should be in the Hall of Fame but there's one that in particular that was one of my personal favorites and you know say what say what you want about the guy uh, as far as uh, the tragedy that happened to him back in 2007 I'm talking about Chris Benoit but you know what oh, Chris. Awesome, yeah, and, and regardless, you know? and regardless of what they, you know, what they think he did or, or, or didn't do or whatever, look at what he gave to the business. Just look at the years of service. You know, I think he exactly. deserves it. Believe it or not, it was it was only about two weeks prior to that they were here in Tampa, and uh, I took my sons to uh, the matches, and uh, my oldest son Berkeley, he went backstage with me and met him, and he was so good to him. Chris was. I mean, you know, he was always a gentleman. He was a tremendous athlete. He was a phenomenal athlete in the ring, man. You know, a legend, in, you know, came from Canada and just tremendous, you know, man? Yeah. It was very sad what happened there, you know, and the only person that knows is the person that did, you know, and he's dead, you know? Yeah. What happened or what caused it or that. They try and, you know, think what could have, what could have done this, what could have caused somebody to do this. You know, and you don't know. You know, you don't know. And that, you know, and that's why I'm sick and tired of the fact that WWE is trying to erase him and try to mark him like he's a murderer. Even though, if you had proof that he d- was a murderer, then sure. But since you don't have the proof, at least you know we don't have it anyway. The visual proof, because there's no cameras or anything. I I still say put him in the Hall of Fame anyway. I mean, it's not right to kill anybody, but he gave so much to the business. He was a good guy in his life. Why not put them in there, you know? Yeah. <laughs> the powers to be, though, that do a lot of stuff, and, you know, uh, you know, it's no, no different than a, a record label, you know, giving somebody the boot and just treating them like cold turkey and, and, you know, a lot of other, you know, different venues that are out there, you know, I mean, uh, you know, and, 
they're trying to protect themselves and trying to protect their livelihood, you know? Sure. Their livelihood and all the people who work for them. Yeah. So they're not going to take any jeopardy, you know, uh, promote one, you know, and uh, put everybody else's livelihood on the line because of it, you know? And I think more or less that's the situation there. I mean, I don't know, you know, and that's not me, you know, but I mean, that's what I would assume, you know? So as we as we get close, uh, to the closing part of this interview, I have one last question to ask you. And I kind of like to ask a lot of uh, celebrities uh, or professional wrestlers or any type of person I talk to uh, this type of question. Uh, in right. your, since you were a pro wrestler, and that's pretty much what brought you to the dance, uh, what advice would you have to any young person that wants to become a professional wrestler? Well, any, any young person, I would suggest, you know, if this is really... You have to take and lay out everything. You know, remember, just like any other sport and stuff like that, okay, there's a lot of people who want to do it, and there's only so many open, openings, you know what I'm saying? So many places to go. You know, you got to weigh out those things before you jeopardize your whole life. Have something to fall back on. Have a trade or have something, if first comes to the show, that you have, you know, skills, you know, to fall back on, that you can support yourself, you know. Got, you know, a lot of things can happen, you know, you know, go to school for what you can do. But the model thing is, if you're going to try to be a wrestler, make sure that somebody that is, you're going to the right place when you're learning this business and uh, train hard, you know, what you do in the ring and out of the ring reflects on you as a person. Remember that, you know, uh, don't burn any bridges. You know, and don't get an attitude if you're lucky enough to get a break. The problem is nowadays, is not, it's not like back in the old days. There's a lot of independents that are working out there, but there's no territories like it used to be back in the old days. Sure. I was lucky enough to be able to come in in my time of career at the end, toward the end of, of them being two or three state territories. I had the opportunity to work with a lot of great guys that, have been, that were working maybe 15, 20, 25 years. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and uh, that were, you know, willing to give me help. You know what I'm saying? Ask questions. Watch all the matches. You know what I'm saying? And hopefully, you know, a lot of old guys sometimes, just like with any business, the older guy, <laughs> sometimes they lose track of the fact that somebody took the time to help them. You know, they can help one guy, you know what I'm saying, that legitimately... You know, uh, they could help them, you know. Hey, you know, you've done your good deed for the day, you know, or for your life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, I'll help make somebody's dream come true, or at least put them in the right direction. You know what I'm saying? And but like I said, if somebody gives you the opportunity, you need to bust your butt, you know, and put in 170, 500, you know, 80 percent, you know, to, you know. Because you only, sometimes you only got one chance of grabbing that that golden ring on the on the uh, Ferris wheel. You know what I'm saying? And uh, if you get the opportunity, you know, make sure that you have all of the right equipment. Make, you know, both physically, mentally. You know, and make sure you know that uh, you don't have an attitude with somebody, or just because you you're wrestling on the independent circuit, you think that you're. Uh, just the greatest thing since sliced bread, you know. <laughs> so, or so, somebody put your name on a marquee. Yeah. They, you know, you're, oh, yeah, I, uh, you know what I'm saying? Be for thankful for what you get. And be thankful for the opportunities that you get. That's my biggest thing I could tell somebody. All right, you know well. Saying? Well, I tell you what, well, this was uh, definitely an honor to speak with you. I mean, I've learned so much about you in the last 45 or almost 45 minutes that we've been talking, <laughs> which is fine, which is fine. I don't care. I mean, there, I say there's a 25-minute time limit, but I say that to everybody because sometimes people don't want to talk that long. You know, they're, they're busy yeah. and all that, and, you know, I wasn't sure what your schedule was like, so I just figured, well, what the heck. We, we, we got a little overtime, and that's all right. And uh, just, just thanks, thank you for just uh, letting me do this. Thank you for just being a, a legendary wrestler, somebody that uh, was one of my favorites and still is uh, to this day as far as uh, great big man who, who can wrestle, who can still 
I'm sure if you got in the ring again, you could probably still you could still probably wrestle. I'm sure a few matches. Oh, I could fall down a lot. That's about it. <laughs> no, I am definitely a handicap match right here. <laughs> But I but, but but what I'm saying is I it's just nice to know that there's guys like you who who care a lot about the the business and who care about their fans and who who I mean you're not an asshole you're 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 a nice guy and, and that's what I like about you. Well, I appreciate that, man. I appreciate the respect. Yeah, you're uh, welcome. Makes me feel good, you know. It's like if somebody wants to talk to me or, or you know wants to get my opinion, I mean, I respect. I respect that a lot, you know, and I, I, I try to respect. Sometimes I put my foot in my mouth and I don't mean to. <laughs> it's by accident. I don't disrespect for anybody. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, that's cool. Uh, you know? <laughs> no, I appreciate that. And uh, it's been a it's been a great to talk to you. And uh, good luck in whatever else that you do with the rest of your life. And hopefully maybe we'll we'll see you in the Hall of Fame someday. I hope so, anyway. No problem. Anytime you want to talk, just give me a buzz. All right, man. Thanks That's again. Fun. Have a good night. <laughs> And that was the legendary, oh, beyond legendary, Fred Ottman, a.k.a. Tugboat, a.k.a. Typhoon from the Natural Disasters of the WWF. Uh, during the WWF days, I, I can say. And, of course, as a, as a shock master in, uh, in WCW, the like 20 years ago, uh, I think it was about when he... Uh, uh, I think it was 1993, anyway, when he made his debut in WCW. If you ever get a chance to watch that match that uh, we were talking about, the Fall Brawl War Games match from 1993, uh, I think he was teaming with, like, Sting and I think the Steiner Brothers at the time. I don't really remember. but uh, I or, or the Legion of Doom or one of them, anyway. Anyway, when he got in the ring and, and it was his turn to, to come in the ring for the match, oh, man, he really whipped a lot of ass. And I tell you... <laughs> <laughs> when you want a big man like that at that time uh, 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 take, uh, taking you down at all <laughs> in a cage match where it's like a war game so there's two rings and uh, that type of uh, match that I kind of miss uh, in the days of wrestling now they don't really do that anymore but uh, uh, because of the Elimination Chamber now in WWE and everything but uh, anyway it was a great honor this is my first guest uh, in my special Road to WrestleMania series uh, we got a few more that w uh, will be happening here soon. I'm not going to say who because I don't want to jinx myself. And you just never know who else is going to stop by uh, the Frankie Salasa show as well. Uh, but uh, this month and, and up to rest, up to April 7th anyway, it will be nothing but just wrestlers. It will just be wrestlers or wrestling people in the wrestling industry only now. So it won't be any actors, won't be any uh, singers or anything like that for, for a while. And whoever else I can get, uh, like I said, it's it's always a surprise. A lot of this is never planned. Some are, some aren't. A lot aren't. And uh, it's just an honor to uh, be able to do this. This is probably one of the longest interviews I've done in a long, long time. Uh, for nearly 45 minutes. <laughs> but it's a good way to kick it off. And uh, for all you real wrestling fans out there, this is a treat to, to all you and to all my followers on Facebook and YouTube and, and all around. So I'm Frank Slauson, and we'll see you next time. For another great interview and another great and some more videos too on my channel on, on youtube.com on the Frankie Slauson Show. Bye bye.